So now we have compliance types associated with compliance definitions for our insurance compliance category. And now that we have all of that set up, I want to show you how to generate records based off of those. So I will go to my applications drop down, go to accounts payable and click into my vendors. And my compliance definitions say that I want compliance records to generate based off of vendor type. So just for the purposes of this video, I had changed A1 Electric to Other. So what I'm going to do is because Other doesn't generate records, I'm going to click into A1 Electric, edit them. And on my additional information tab, I'll change the vendor type to subcontractor. And when I do that, then when I save it, compliance records will be generated. You could also update this using an export import. So now to show you those actual compliance records, I'm going to go to my purchasing module, which is where my compliance lives. And I'm going to click into my compliance records. And I can see that so vendor 76 is my A1 electric. And I have now got five different records for each of the insurance compliance types that are associated with that definition. And then this V79 is for a drywall, which I did previous to starting this video as an import, just to show you that both ways do work. So to edit, then you just click edit here and go into the actual record itself. You can put in your policy information, like a policy number, the dates and what project even it's associated with. And then, of course, you have to put in your expiration date because the insurance is always validated against expiration date. So what I would do here is I would do, say maybe I got it on the 1st of July, 2023, and it expired yesterday. And then I could save that record. And it's going to say that there's a warning now whenever I go to pay that vendor because their insurance has expired. Another way to view the compliance records is in accounts payable. If you go back into vendors, and I'm going to click into A1 Electric and then under my vendor compliance tab, it's going to show me all of the compliance records. And then it also has your miscellaneous and your lien waivers. And we will get to that in another video. And I'm just going to pause the video here and I'm going to enter in these. So I don't need you guys to be <laughs> watching that. So one sec. So I did these three and then just to show you how to edit the record within the vendor itself, you click on this little pencil button here and it brings up it's the exact same compliance record as we saw in purchasing. I'm going to put in again my 2023 and my expiration date was yesterday. Save and save again. So now if I go to my entity level, I have a bill in here for A1 Electric and if I go to pay that, there's a warning here or an error here that says that their compliance records is expired. And just to show you, because it's set up as an error, I can click on that and try to pay it and it's not going to let me. So see, it wasn't processed because they have an expiration date on their compliance record. Whereas if I had my compliance definition set up just to give me a warning, I could actually override that and I could pay them. So that's two different ways that you can set up the definition. You can set it up as a warning or you can set it up as an error. And if it comes up as an error, it won't let you pay it. So that is how to generate the compliance records. And in the next video, we'll go through lien waivers.